Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Fuse Countdown by Renegade Game Studios. This is a one to four player game that takes exactly 10 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Fuse Countdown, you are a comms director in a naval outpost on a ship, and the computer has detected bombs, several of them, on board. Your job, along with other comms directors, is to go ahead and attempt to crack them, stop them from blowing up the ship. If you can remove all the bombs, by the time the 10 minute countdown is up, you will survive and you will tally up your points or see how well you did. And if not, you will lose. There is multiple difficulties and different challenges along the way with unique new computer inputs to help you as well as the bombs have devious ways to trick you. Solve the codes, deduce the bombs, and remove them before time is up. Find out how to play, how to set the game up, and of course our review for Fuse Countdown right now. To set up the game Fuse Countdown, the first thing that you will do is set aside the different types of cards. One is going to be the set of bomb cards, along with of course the advanced versions, which you can set aside until you want to play later. You're also going to be getting these called the spark cards. And finally, you're going to be getting these cards, which are the operators. These are your character cards that can give you bonus abilities. Shuffle up all the main bomb cards and then take out a stack based on the number of players. In a three player game, you're going to have 16 shuffled cards into a deck, five face up in the game board in front of all players, and then each player is going to get two placed in front of them face up. Additionally, each player is going to get or select one unique character. You'll take this character and put it next to your bomb cards. After that, make sure you set aside all the rest of the bomb cards, any advanced bomb cards you're not playing with, and of course the extra characters, you will not be using these guys here. Make sure of course the spark deck is shuffled and ready to go in front of all players, and of course all the dice are in this bag here, along with of course the bag within reach of the first player of the game. Then. You're ready to go. Fuse Countdown is a dexterity game. This is a game where you'll be rolling dice, selecting dice, and placing them down on your bomb cards. Your objective is to complete each bomb card as it is written, and once you do so, you'll take the dice you used for it, put it back in the bag, remove the card, and then go ahead and gather a new card. And you'll keep doing this round to round. To begin the game, the first player is going to have this bag here, and this bag is going to be utilized by having that player draw a number of dice, usually equal to the number of players, unless you're playing with one or two players, and then they're going to roll these dice. Once they have rolled the dice, make sure that all players can see them and have each player select a die in any order. You will take these die, you will place them down onto one of your squares on your bomb card, and then after each player has selected and placed one down, the next player is going to take the bag. That player is then going to go ahead and grab three dice randomly, roll those dice, and then place them within reach of all players, and you will rinse and repeat this as you go throughout the game. It functions the same way for each player, but there is a unique difference. Throughout the game, as you get the bag, you will get to use your special ability. Like for instance, the equipment technician says that after rolling the dice, she can actually roll the dice um, and change the, uh, she can actually change one of the numbers that has been rolled. Or the explosives instructor, after rolling dice, you can re-roll any rolled dice up to three times, turning it kind of into a Yahtzee. Or the technologist, after rolling dice, you may change the color of any one of the die you rolled, making it basically a wild color. So in this case here, if I was playing as the explosive instructor, a constructor and I rolled these dice here, let's say I didn't want this three or four, I could re-roll them once and then for a third time, in which case people are able to then select the dice. And you would just go ahead and rinse and repeat. So I would take this five here, uh, and then this player over here could take this four here, and this player here has a two. Now, if you cannot place a die, so this, for instance, this character here is not able to place a die on the specific card here, that player is going to have to discard the die back into the bag and they're going to take a spark card. The card will go underneath or next to their board in some way, and that is going to uh, make it a bit, a bit of a hindrance for that player. Four new spaces have been added and they have to remove these four spaces by placing die on them to remove the spark card. The game will progress for 10 minutes. In fact, you will use a timer or there is also an app that will give you a 10 minute countdown. Your objective is to finish these cards. And as you finish them, so let's say I, I got a one and a five and then the last number I needed is a six. I would place it down. I would remove these guys here, put them back in the bag. This card would get discarded into a scoring pile. I would select a new card from the main game pool 
and then I will add a new card from this deck here. And anybody can do this during any player's turn, as long as they have solidified the stack that they need. This case here, this this person has go out, gone ahead and finished their card here. They will take a new one out of their, cho of their choosing from the main game pile and draw a new card out. And you're gonna try and remove all of the cards here. Now, in order to win the game, you have to get rid of this entire stack of cards, along with all five cards here. And if you have a spark card or spark cards in front of you, you'll have to remove these as well. Most spark cards are pretty simple. They just have spaces on them. And the spaces with a question mark just mean you can place any die you want there. But it is a way to slow you down from being able to accomplish the cards there as your goal. And once you go ahead and get rid of this card here, you can go ahead and put it on the bottom of the deck or you can put it on the side of the deck. You're not scoring points for these guys here. These are kind of like a hindrance for when you're not able to place dice that have been rolled throughout the game. And that's basically how the game goes. Start the timer, give a player the bag, have them roll dice, and then have each player select one of those dice and place it on one of their cards. If they cannot select a die to place, they will take a spark card and put the dice back. If they accomplish one of their cards, they will discard that card into a scoring pile and draw a new card out. If the timer runs out and you've gotten rid of all of the cards in the main area of the game board, then you're going to score your pile here. The top right of each card is going to have a scoring section. Uh, and if you are unable to finish this or any of these spark cards by the time the 10 minute period is up, you are going to lose the game. It's that simple. This is a dexterity game, straightforward, simple, but it has some uniqueness to it. I'll talk about all the types of cards and how that all works and what I thought about the game uh, in my review right now. So we, I think, but for the most part, you understand the basic concept of the game, Fuse Countdown. So before I get into my review, I wanna talk about a few extra things in the game. Uh, first of all, there are additional bomb cards, and these are kind of like events that pop up. For instance, this one here will let each player either discard a, um, a number one, or um, the black die here, a number two or a green, a three or a yellow, a four or a blue. And so each player is gonna have to kind of get rid of dice as opposed to uh, putting them on um, or, or, or as well as putting them on. So you'll flip over, you'll put this out, you'll complete it, it'll go into your discard pile. You don't score points for them, but they're a way to kind of slow your game down and make it a little more challenging. Additionally, there are different game modes as well. The one I explained is the uh, standard mode, but based on the number of players, you can do training, standard, expert, elite, or heroic, which just basically includes more cards as well as utilizes these as well if you would like. So if you want an even more competitive or more challenging portion of gameplay, you can go ahead and add more cards to the deck. Each of these cards have unique twists and turns to them. Some of them are quite simple. It'll just say, okay, this is a one, three, five, and a two slash four. And on these bombs, you just need to place a uh, die with a one pip on it, a die with a three on it, a die with a five on it, a die with a two or a four on it. And once you have all these spaces completed, it will get discarded and you can go ahead and choose a new one and put it out. Uh, that being said, there are some more complicated cards as well. So for instance, we have cards like this. Uh, cards like this have little arrows on them, and they're gonna indicate a bottom row and a top row. And the bottom row has colors, so we'll be placing the colors red, blue, and yellow on the bottom, red, blue, and yellow. And then they're gonna stack. On top of these three, you're gonna then have to place these three. Uh, this one is a split die. Uh, there are some unique die in the game that are gonna give you benefits, but also some of the uh, bombs require them to be added in order for them to be functional. Like for instance, I have a green die here that's also a red die. It has this little like half red, half green portion to it, or a yellow, and blue die here. And there's one split die for each of the two different colors. Uh, and there are some symbols that require you to place a split die down. So it would be a split die, a black, and a green. And once you've complete, completed that, you'll be done. Uh, uh, or a more complicated version as well, is something like this. You can choose any two numbers that are the same and any two numbers that are the same, but they could also be any two colors or any two colors that are the same. So a two and a two, and a red and a red, or a green and a green, and a four and a four. It's up to you. Uh, a lot of these cards have variability that allow you to place die how you would like to place them. Um, other ones here, like this one over here, uh, these require a stack, basically. So first you have to have a two or a three, and then you can have any color you want, followed by the exact same color. And then that color has to be a greater uh, number than the next number. So this color, if it's green, this is if this is two, green and green, and this green is a four, 
then you have to place a three, two, or a one on the next one. And so each of these cards is gonna have unique twists and turns to them. Some of them are stacking, some of them are gonna be um, pluses, equals, uh, some of them are gonna require certain pips or certain types of dice or certain colors. And it just kind of changes up as you're going along. And selecting these guys is gonna be important as well. The lower value ones are gonna be easier to complete. The higher ones are gonna be more challenging. When you also, at the beginning of the game, when you take two of these cards out, there's rules as to how you take them. You're not going to ever take a four and a five. I think you're going to get, if you get one, four, five, or six, you then are only, only, only able to get a one, two, or a three. So you have to kind of, it'll tell you exactly how to set up in the rules, but you're never going to get two big cards at the very beginning of the game. And that should be kind of a rules for how you gather and select these guys as well. Uh, th those are pretty much all the unique twists and turns to the game. Basically, unique types of cards, your special abilities, and then, of course, the spark cards that just kind of slow you down. Some of them are going to be unique and have, like, certain numbers that you're going to equal to, but a lot of them are just going to be wild, um, and you're going to have to place die down and just get rid of them. So Fuse Countdown is a dexterity game, first and foremost. If you do not like dexterity games, you will not like Fuse Countdown. This is a fast game. Even playing on the standard mode, it was challenging, especially if you're not, if you're, if you're not like keen to playing these quick die rolling games. The way to succeed in games like these is go, grab, roll, everyone select something, hurry, place down, and move on. And then have the next player put them back, shuffle, grab, and then roll, and then each player selects, and move on. And having that become like this cohesive mechanical instrument that you guys have all set up as a team is how you will succeed. This is one of those games too, where as you play, the more you play, the better you're going to get. If you like dexterity games, then Fuse Countdown is going to be a solid choice because uh, this is one of those games where you wanna play again especially if you lose, and you're very likely to lose if you're not playing on the practice mode. And when you lose, you'll want to set it up once again and continue, and you will start to see your progress. You'll start to see yourself get better, and you'll start to see which different types of characters you like to use. I like all the different characters. They all function differently and affect the game, affect the die you roll, and allow you to help your teammates or yourself out. And they all have their uh, bonuses. And I personally don't have a specific preference as to which one I like the best. I don't think there's any ones that are necessarily broken or better because they're all very, very good. But that's because the game is very, very challenging. Getting through this deck here might seem quite simple, but you only have 10 minutes to do so, and you're only able to place basically one die on your two cards every turn, meaning you're passing this and passing this and passing this, and as, you, as the game goes on, it becomes ch more challenging. Uh, a couple of things to, to, to note, uh, that you don't have to actually complete the ones in front of you in order to win. All you have to do is make sure you have none of these spark cards and all of these cards in the front have been removed. And then you'll just tally up your score. And the score on the top right is kind of arbitrary, really. The idea is how many cards can you get rid of, but I guess this matters too because some of these are more challenging than others. And so you're always trying to beat your score. It's a competitive game, but you're competing against yourselves. You're working together to get the next high score. If you want something that's frantic, that's fun, and dexterous, something that's going to make you high stress, and something that's going to push you to push your teammates to succeed, making you guys work together, then Fuse Countdown is an excellent game. This is also one of those games I would call a niche game. If you don't like anything that I've said, you should probably deter yourself from playing this. Because if you can't understand the cards quickly, if they start, if you, after the first two rounds or two games you play, if these are still really hard to understand, this is probably not going to be the game for you. It's probably just going to frustrate you. It's going to annoy you and it's going to make you upset. Uh, if you do not like games where you have to rush or feel rushed or feel stressed, then Fuse Countdown is not for you. Uh, somebody wanted me to rank games uh, in my last video, and I thought about it, and it was like, I, I want to rank games, but sometimes like Fuse, games like Fuse Countdown, I, I, I could rank this for me personally, which I would say this is a solid 8 out of 10. I really like this game. But I always think about the audience, right? If you are somebody who do not like rolling games, this is going to be a zero for you straight up. You're not going to enjoy this whatsoever. And if you like dexterity games, like flicking and whatnot, this also still might not be for you because that's not going to be as high stress as this is. So if you don't like high stress games, eh, it's going to be a no-no. Um, there are certain things that uh, in a game perspective, I would say you're going to have to learn. That's probably my only qualm because I do like games that are fast on your feet and thinky. Um, 
but you're gonna have to memorize these cards and understand them, understand what they do and how they function when rolling dice, because if you don't know, your first two games are going to be slow, you're very likely to lose because you won't understand the cards. You're not gonna have to ask people questions again. Oh, what's this card do? How does this card stack? What number is this supposed to be? Oh, it's a double die. And it's, it's part of the game. You're gonna have to learn them. That's just the case. But once you get through all the kinks of the game and understand the concept and how you work together, it becomes cohesive fun and exciting. I have a live stream up from this last weekend, and if you're interested in watching us play the game, you can find it here on YouTube. But yes, for me personally, this is a fun game. I love these type of games, and I enjoy them, and I like the stress to them, so I would recommend Fuse Countdown. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fuse. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description from Renegade Game Studios. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping this game in my collection. Uh, we played this game a lot on the live stream. I definitely think you should watch it as well as, of course, subscribing to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. If you have watched more than one video here, if this was your second video, and you think I've earned your subscription, I do greatly appreciate it. I will give you a great big hug. It's, it's, it's a metaphorical hug. Go ahead and push the button so you can see more of our videos. We create tons of content, a lot of stuff from Kickstarter and new games that are coming out, as well as, of course, manufactured games from popular companies. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. We have live streams at 6.30 p.m. PST on Wednesdays and Sundays. Wednesdays is for whatnot, and Sundays is going to be for Insta uh, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube, where you see us play games just like this one. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to diffusing all of the bombs with you next time.